What up, people? What is up, everybody? What's up? You woke up at 5 a.m. to be present? You're crazy. You're crazy. Shalom, shalom, shalom. What is up, everybody? How are we doing today? Your name's Lahari from Africa. It's your first time here. Welcome, welcome. 2 a.m. Thanks, Maurice. Maurice is French, I'm assuming. What's up, Emiliano? 8 p.m. here as well, guys. 8 p.m. here as well. Some of you guys live in the future. Like, you know tomorrow's news before we do. How am I doing? I'm doing well, guys. What's up, Samuel? Say our greetings. Get everybody in here. What's up, Portugal? Yes, I did have Taco Bell today. I did have Taco Bell. I'm doing some ad placement here. I should probably get that out. But what's up, Burnt Toast? I'm pretty sure if you go back to every stream I do, you will hear what's up, Burnt Toast in some form or another. What's up, Demetrius? What's up, Deadly? What's up, everybody? What's up, Austin? What's up, Drumstick? Start here in about one more minute. One more minute. We've got an eventful night. It's still probably only going to be an hour long, but I, I think we'll, we'll learn a little bit of the good stuff. So we'll see how this goes. The naughty seat. Nobody's in the naughty seat right now. Just you occasionally. Let's flip this real quick. There we go. What's up, Hell's Fury? South Africa represent, Netherlands represent. What's up, guys? You managed to get all but one of the second set of challenges? You are a baller, dude. You're Dutch? I tried. I guessed, and I guessed wrong. I'm sorry. Audio's popping a bit. Let's turn that down just a tad then, shall we? All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. What's up, Pakistan? Okay, let's switch to the other screen, shall we? Welcome to week three of web app pen testing. In this week, we are going to be covering, let me take myself off the screen. Uh, we're gonna be covering some web app fun. We're gonna quickly talk about announcements. I've got maybe five to 10 minutes worth of announcements, updates, errors, etc. what we're gonna learn, uh, just as an overview. And then we are going to do some web app fun. We're gonna cover a bunch of fun stuff. So moving forward, let's talk about announcements. No class on 9-11 or 9-18. Sad face. Sad face. I have to travel on 9-11 and on 9-18. I have to be prepping for another course that's going live on Saturday. So I will not be available. We will resume on 9-25. Now, I may be able to stream and off stream, but the time that goes into this in terms of lesson planning, I probably put anywhere from, I want to say, 8 to 12 hours to get a, a stream ready for a week. So as of right now, uh, you know, it's it's a lot of work with the time crunch I've got for, for getting this class completed. Uh, so especially with traveling um, the week before. So with that being said, we will resume on 925. No stream on 911 for sure. Maybe a stream on 918. Maybe we'll do like a, a hacking stream or a hack the box or something along those lines. Uh, in terms of other things on the board, we now have some upcoming sponsorships. Uh, one of them will, the product will be arriving in about a week. It's very, very, very exciting. 
Um, I'm gonna be doing a review for a product, a hacking product, and if it goes well, we're going to hopefully get some swag, get some cool tools, and do some good giveaways. Um, on top of that, there are a couple other sponsorships that are coming up. I put out an announcement for this. Uh, there, there's a one that is going to give away five small items, but still five items. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we get to it. So I can't name any names yet, but we will have, uh, some, some cool sponsors coming through. One of them being very hacking related. Uh, the other one more, more swag or, or tech. It's not really, uh, it's, it's not really hacking related, but still, uh, on top of that, there are, uh, Two talks that I got picked up for this week. One I can officially announce, one I cannot. Um, I will be speaking at B-Sides Charleston. So if you're in South Carolina, I'll be at B-Sides Charleston. I will also be at Wild West Hacking Fest. We should find out tomorrow about B-Sides Charlotte, and we will uh, be announcing the other B-Sides or wherever that I got into uh, here in maybe a, a week or less. So... Uh, it, for now, they've asked to keep it uh, on the hush-hush. So, uh, upcoming sponsorships and talks covered that. We now have some merch. You guys were begging for merch. Um, so, I, I just created a little channel on, on Teespring. It's tied to the YouTube channel. So, if you ever come here, you want to buy a shirt with a pink or bluish-greenish logo or a sticker or some dumb saying on a t-shirt... You're more than welcome. Uh, the the store is now open, so uh, you know, please, if you want to support the channel, this is a good way, and get some swag as well. So, outside of all those announcements, I have made a mistake. Thank you, CMOS, for pointing this out. Uh, so, last week I said the secure flag prevented cross-site scripting, and I lied to you guys. I am a liar. Okay, I. I said it prevented cross-site scripting. It does not prevent cross-site scripting. The secure flag prevents a cookie from being seen in clear text, meaning that if you're using HTTPS, somebody cannot strip that HTTPS out and show it in HTTP clear text. I get these confused big time. Why the hell is a secure flag not called HTTPS only? Because that would make logical sense. Um, so the flag that we're talking about on the cookie is actually the HTTP only flag. HTTP only means that the cookie cannot be accessed through the client side script. So we will not be able to steal a cookie client side which, with the HTTP only flag set. Uh, only the server can interact with that. So thank you again, CMOS, for pointing that out. That was a, uh, a mistake on my part. So from here, what are we gonna learn tonight? Well, we are going to work with some cross-site scripting. We're going to talk a little bit about sanitization bypassing. Um, so we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about stored cross-site scripting for the first time tonight. Uh, so we covered DOM-based and reflected last week. Tonight we'll talk about stored. Uh, we are also going to talk about broken access control, which is OWASP number five on the top ten list. And one of my favorites, we're going to start covering SQL injection. Just the basics. I'm not going to overwhelm you. If you've never seen SQL before, this is a good, good start. Uh, so tonight are the easy challenges, right? Before they were trivial. Tonight, they're easy. We're going to cover pretty much all of them. I might leave two or three for you to figure out on your own. I might even give you a nudge or a hint if you need to. One of them, we really can't solve without doing other ones. So I don't know why they put it in here. Uh, well, honestly, this application was built to be prodded and find different security flaws and then go back and find the other ones uh, and get rewards that way. But uh, the, one of the challenges I don't think we can do in good faith, we could do it, but in good faith, we should discover more information before we go into it. Uh, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and dive in. I've got more slides. The rest of the slides are on cross-site scripting. So let's go ahead and just get started on our app. So I'm going to get into my handy dandy Kali machine. And we are going to be working on the juice shop. Get to your juice shop if you have not already. Get to your juice shop. From there, make sure you are on your scoreboard. If your scoreboard reset, which mine did, yours might reset as well. Um, make sure that you get to your scoreboard. You'll get the points here, whatever. It's no big deal. Uh, on top of this, make sure you load your burp suite. Today we'll be using community. Uh, I noticed some of you 
would rather me use community than pro and I completely understand and agree. So we'll be doing everything as proof of concept that we can do in community as well. Uh, so I've got my scoreboard loaded up tonight. And if we come down to the easy challenges, let me see if I can tab off of this. Okay, if we come down to the easy challenges, again, I have arranged these logically. So logically, I wanna start with cross-site scripting because last time we started or ended with cross-site scripting. So again, we should start here and then we'll move forward. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with cross-site scripting. We'll move into broken access control and a little bit of security misconfiguration. And then we'll dive into all the SQL injection fun stuff. So let's copy this down here, this script alert XSS. This is a very, very common one, right? Uh, so we're gonna copy this and let's go ahead and log in because it says perform a cross-site scripting attack on a legacy page within the application. Now we prodded the exterior okay uh, in terms of like forms that we could fill out last week and what we could do. We didn't go too detailed, right? Um, but just to save a little time, not to poke around too much, we're just gonna log in and your account probably got reset. So I'm gonna go ahead and register. If your account got reset, go ahead and register as well. It's gonna be test at test.com. And what's our security question gonna be? Our mother's maiden name was Bob. So let's register. And let's go ahead and log into the application. Okay, so we are logged into the application. Now from this area, let's go ahead and go to our profile. So you click on your little picture here and go to test at test.com. This is an area that we did not explore in last episode. So here we go. We have username input, email input, We've got a URL we can put here. So we've got some forms that we can put in. Uh, one thing that's interesting, let's say we wanna give a username of test and we set the username. We see that the username is actually being stored right here and it's being stored right here. So maybe if we're lucky, we can just paste this in, right? And set the username and see what happens. Well, crap, what is it doing here? It is sanitizing our, our script, right? And what's interesting about this is it took off, it looks like what it's taking off is script A. So it's taking off script A here. Um, now we could try to get around this, maybe a little bit of bypassing. So for example, we could, we could write script A and if we know that the A is there, what if we write a second A and see if that changes anything? Um, maybe we can get it to finally say alert if we set the username here. Okay, so that works. So we added a double A uh, and got that to work. Now, can we can we take that farther at all? Can we? I wonder if we could go something like um, script like this, and maybe it'll take it out for us. And if we do this, we get the little, we get this in here, but it's still taking out that script A. Um, so this is where cross-site scripting gets a little fun. You can tell that there, there are some flaws here, right? It's not taking out the closing of the script. It's not taking out the alert. It's only sanitizing on a little bit. So we have the ability here to, uh, you know, to try a bunch of different payloads and see see what works. We can fuzz this and keep going and, and see how possibly we can break this and make this work in our favor. Uh, another thing to be that should be noted, if, if you go out to Google, um, there are, if this will work, uh, there are some, is proxy on? It's not, okay. There are some things like if we say cross-site scripting payloads, there's cheat sheets and stuff out there, like this cross-site scripting payloads, payload.txt. If you come here, you can look at all the different payloads. Look at all these different payloads here. So this is something that maybe you can throw into Burp Intruder and play around with and see. Um, there's other tools like XSSer. Uh, I could type that out for you, but XSSer. You can play around with these tools or you can do it manually. 
Um, for this lesson, we're just gonna we're just gonna play with it manually and see how how we can actually get this to work. So we realize that when we put double in there, it works, right? Um, maybe we can do script something like this, but let's see if that works. Nope, still sanitizing it. So it's picking up that the word script is in there even if we're doubling up. So we can double up in some places and make it work. Uh, how about we, we break it? How about we get it to sanitize something and then not sanitize the rest? Let's try using a uh, what's called a bitwise. We can use a bitwise and or or XOR. Um, here's an example. We can say something like, and if you're following along here, let's do an or. Let's just say or here. Okay, this is going to get executed. Then the rest of it is going to stay the same. And this is going to stay the same. This will get executed, sanitized, and the rest will go away. And I just screwed that up a little bit. Let's try that now. If I could get it correct. So you're going to want AA script. I screwed that up. There you go. Something like this, right? We're going to get the, the script to, to execute here and then set the username. And that should pop. That should pop. Now this will work. This will work with any of the bitwise operators here, right? So we could say um, we could say a XLR like this and get this to execute. That should work. Same thing with the and. We can use and as well. It's just pulling this operation out and then pushing the rest through. And this is how you kind of start working through logically. If you see sanitization, how can you improve it? And sometimes what in, really what you see a lot of times is these script tags are removed. So when you have these script tags removed, how are you going to alert the cross site scripting? Well, you might be able to come through and do something like an image uh, like they're doing here. Or this is a very, very common one. You load an image that doesn't exist. And because that doesn't exist, it creates an alert. Right, so on air, here's an alert. So with that, uh, we actually have stored cross-site scripting here. If we were to refresh, you could see that cross-site scripting still exists. Even if we go back and we come back into the profile, this cross-site scripting is stored. It is stored on the server. So this is uh, this is no bueno, right? This is not good. So uh, this is what we're talking about when we can attack another user. Now, say this was a low-level account and some, somehow, some way, the username interacts with the, uh, with the admin account in some way, right? If the admin account sees this and gets that cross-site scripting, that stored cross-site scripting, maybe this steals a cookie or maybe this does key longing or injects uh, a beef hook or something along those lines that is malicious, this can get really bad when it comes to affecting other users. So let's go ahead and cross that one off the list. So we've completed one challenge. We completed the, the cross-site scripting tier. Okay, so from here, let's talk about a couple other ones really quick. Uh, most of our time tonight is going to be spent on SQL injection. So these two should go by pretty quick. So we're going to talk about broken access control. And the broken access control here is this basket access tier one. Now, we're going to view another user's shopping basket. We should not be able to do that. If we can view somebody else's items, that means we have broken access control, right? Uh, we are crossing against the access boundaries and uh, getting access to things we shouldn't. So if we come to the home page, and we just add, let's add some apple juice to our cart. And it should say, hey, we place it into the basket. So let's go to the basket and see what's up in here. Okay, we've got apple juice. Perfect. Uh, so from here, we can do some can do some things. Let's uh, let's inspect an element. And we really want to focus on what's in this cart, right? And what's in this cart 
uh, is likely in this storage here. Now we've got uh, different types of storage. What we're likely interested in is a session storage here. So if we go down into the session storage, you can see that we have a bid value. Now our bid value at the moment is six. Uh, if we were to change this bid value to a different number, it's a possibility that we can access somebody else's, right? So we can go into five perhaps. And if we go into five and refresh the page, let's see if this is apple juice anymore. Uh, there's nothing there. Let's go into, let's try one. Refresh the page on that. Okay, there's a new cart. So you can see here we've accessed somebody's cart. We're still under our account. We're still under test at test.com, which is what I set up. However, the, uh, the issue here is that we can delete these or we can even go and start checking out, uh, but we can really mess with somebody's cart. We can delete the cart items. Uh, we can get malicious, piss them off. So um, all this, somebody asked what bidding stands for. This is just a key value pair. So if you've ever done programming, this is key value, right? So this is your cart and your ID of your cart. So your cart ID or this user's cart ID is one. This user's cart ID, if we switch over, is two. Buyer ID, exactly. You're, you're probably right on the buyer ID. And yes, this is going to be uh, on VOD, always on VOD, guys. So this is the this is the value that we're changing in this key value pair. So our cart, our cart lives at six, but we're accessing other people's carts in a way that we shouldn't. And this is a very, very, very basic example of broken access control. Basket ID, is it basket ID? I'm down for any of these. Basket ID works as well, guys. Call it whatever, whatever we want. So, okay, from here, pretty easy. If we go to your scoreboard, you should have popped this. And now we've got two out of 10. So we'll cover more broken access control in depth uh, as we go. These, these easier challenges, again, very easy. As we get into the medium and they get extensively more difficult and deeper. You see, we did nine and 10. Uh, we're gonna end up doing 19, 21, 16, 11. So if you were to look through your, your guide, we are not even, I mean, we're not even uh, a tenth of the way through the guide, really. What's up, Action? Thanks for the sub, man. I appreciate it. Okay, so next one I want to talk about really quick is a security misconfiguration. So this is the deprecated interface. So if we talk about deprecated interface, it says use a deprecated B2B interface that was not properly shut down. Now this one might've been difficult with the hint that was here to, um, to solve. This isn't really, I, I don't know if this is the best description. Some of these don't have the best descriptions on what you're looking for. And again, I think that you're probably supposed to go through and just kind of prod around and see what you can get. Now where this issue lies is actually in the upload element, right? So if we go into a contact us and we say, hey, we want to complain. In here, it allows us to select a file. Now, if we go and look at the file supported types, we have the ability to upload a PDF and a zip. If we were to upload anything else, we're going to run into an issue. But maybe it is supporting other types and we just don't see it. So a way we can tell is actually in our debugger here. If we click on the debugger, if you still have your console open or your inspector open and you're on main, make sure you make your main pretty. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a control F for find and we're going to look for zip files. Let's try dragging this up. So if we search for something like zip and we come through here, right away the first thing that comes through in this in this javascript is the allowed mime type and you can see that it says this uploader okay and this is the file uploader we're doing a file upload and what's happening here is it says hey we can upload application pdf application zip three different types of zips right but 
We can also upload XML files. So that can get malicious very, very quick, especially if we're talking uh, XXE, which we haven't got to XXE yet. Hey, thanks, Dow Shock. Appreciate that. So we haven't got to XXE, but when we talk XXE, as we will in this course, uh, you can see how XML can become malicious. For now, let's just try uploading a XXE or XML file. I'll do one that's kind of semi-malicious. It's not going to do anything because it's not complete. Thank you, Pi Tutor. Appreciate it, man. And I have this on copy and paste, but I will actually use this opportunity to paste this, let you guys copy this, and take a quick drink break because my mouth is dried out already. All right, good time for a, uh, a question as well. So what does XXE mean? XXE is XML external entities. So what we can do is upload an XML file, and this is very basic example. I can show you a payload real quick. Let's go to Google, shall we? And we'll say XXE payloads. Take a look at some payloads here. Let's click the first one. So you can come through here and see what we can do um, and how we can use these attacks. There's some in here that will just show you like the Etsy shadow file of a system or Etsy password. Um, and they're talking out of bounds, meaning that it can talk back to us, right? Uh, so there's a lot of things that we can do here. These are some good ones. You can find a bunch of different payload types. But as of right now, we're not... We're not focusing too much on XCC. We'll we'll get there as we cross that bridge. Uh, but here's one where it's just you know file Etsy password. And if we're if we're able to, we can pull out the Etsy password file. So, okay. And if you guys ever want to see a uh, a good video or two on XXE, check out Stoke S T O K on YouTube. That dude is his. His passion is XXE. He's a bug bounty hunter. XXE is his passion. Um, I would trust him more than anybody else, more than myself on this topic, especially uh, with XXE stuff. So if you want to see some cool things that he's done before in the past, very great channel to check out. So anyway, uh, so yes, we are we are logged in here and we can now come through. And somebody's going in and solving the, the problems ahead of time. That's absolutely fine. So, okay, I've got this saved here. We can just save this as an XML file. We'll just call it test.xml, and I'll put it on the desktop. And we can just go browse, home, desktop. Uh, oh, we got to do all files, and then we'll grab this test.xml. And then just say testing and submit it, and you can see that use a deprecated B2B interface that was not properly shut down. We have solved this problem. So what has happened here is they meant to disable XML, but they left XML as an application type in for the uploads, and now we bypassed it, right? So we can get malicious with this in the future. As of right now, we just want to make sure that we can actually upload this file. And that is, that is it for this. So from here, we're going to go ahead and get into, uh, we're going to get into SQL injection. So let me bring up the handy dandy PowerPoint. And let's talk SQL injection. Okay, so what is SQL injection? SQL injection is an attack in which malicious SQL statements are injected into a SQL database. Okay, so SQL injection is easy to avoid, but still happens quite often. Uh, if we're successful, we can do a lot of malicious things. We can read sensitive databases. We can extract that information that we read. Uh, we can modify, delete databases, uh, and we can even get a shell out of this. Okay, so potentially we can get a, a reverse shell or any some type of shell and access the machine as a user. Uh, sometimes what you'll find is that you get a shell on a SQL 
a machine or a database and you're not, well, you might be the SQL user, but that SQL user has admin or domain admin privileges and it gets really bad really quick. Uh, so bad permissions on users like this happens very, very often as well. Okay, so let's talk about some common SQL verbs and we're gonna put this all to use here in just a minute. So SQL statements begin with verbs. The most common one that you're going to ever see is select, okay? Select means that we're retrieving data from a table. We can also insert data into a table, delete data, update data. We could be old, uh, old drops here, right? And do a drop, which deletes a table. And we've got union statements as well, which we'll run into in the future. And that just combines multiple queries, right? Mul or data from multiple queries. So these are very, very, very common. These aren't all inclusive by any means, but very common as to what you're going to see. Uh, every language is a little bit different depending on the SQL database that you're in, uh, but these are pretty common across the board. So from here, we need to talk a couple other common terms that we're gonna see. Uh, one is where. So where filters records based on a specific condition, and you're gonna see an example of this in a minute. Uh, we have and, or, or not. They sound exactly like they are. They are conditional statements and it filters records based on multiple conditions. Uh, and then we have order by, which sorts in ascending naturally or descending order if you specify. Okay, so I have typed up a little table here. We've got five users in this SQL database. Okay, we've got user IDs of one through five, got a username, uh, got their full name, and their email address and then their country code. Now this table here, this table is called the users table. That's what I have named it for this demonstration. So let's talk a few statements and talk about what would happen if we were to execute these statements. Now, the first statement, this is very common, select asterisk from users. Okay, remember select, we're selecting. We're selecting all data when we do a wildcard here, okay? This is a wild card, as we're gonna see in a minute. This is just a wild card. Asterisk means everything. From, and then we're gonna grab it from the users table. So if we ran this statement, we're returning every single thing that's in this table. So if we've got SQL injection and we run this statement, we can, we can get all the data out of an entire table, right? Just from this one little statement. Okay, so now let's talk about more specific things. Let's say we wanted to select user ID and username from this user table. Okay, we will select user ID, username. All we're gonna grab are these two columns right here. We'll grab all the data that's in here and that's it. Okay, let's add on to these. Let's say we wanna grab everything from users but only where the country is equal to Russia, okay? If we only pull from Russia, then we're only pulling out Natasha here, right? So, cause she's the only Russian in this group of five. So if we ran that query, we would pull out Natasha. And then the last one, if we're going to select star from users where country equals US, well, if we just do this, we'll pull out four, right? And username equals Frank, then we're just gonna pull out anybody with the username of Frank, which hopefully hopefully the usernames uh, aren't reused. So we'll just pull out Frank Castle here and all of his information. So maybe we can pull everything from users where username equals admin. So yes, yes, I will share my slides. All right, so from here, let's talk special characters really quick. So special characters, these are some important things that you're gonna see. You're gonna see something like this apostrophe or a uh, single quote or, or double quote, right? These are string delimiters. We'll talk about these in a second. You'll see why they're important. We have these comment delimiters here. We've got wild cards. You just saw a wild card, and this is also a wild card, the percentage sign. 
You saw, if you looked in the back one, that we were, or if you looked back one slide, let's see if I can go back a slide. We're ending our SQL statements with the semicolon, right? So that ends a SQL statement. And then the rest that you're gonna see here, they follow programmatic logic. So if you can think of what an equal sign or plus sign, greater than, less than, uh, et cetera, if you know what these do, and this does functions right here, uh, if you know any programming at all, this this follows that logic. So that is, I believe it. Yes, that's it for the little SQL overview. That is, is where we're at here. Okay, now one of our objectives before we log out is to gain access to the uh, administrator, right? So we are gonna do admin login. Now for this, we're going to use SQL injection. So let's talk about how this is gonna work. So if we log out and we go to log back in and let me pull up, actually this will be fine, this XML doc. Let's talk about what we're doing. Let's say I've got an email address here and I say, I say the email that I'm gonna provide, I'll just say the user's test and the password's test. And we say, okay, log in. It's not gonna work, right? We have no idea what the administrator is, what's happening here. Um, what's going on though is we can, let's see what's going on possibly behind the scenes, right? So what we're doing is we are going to say, we're gonna say the input that we just did was test, right? And the SQL that's going to be on behind that uh, it might look something like this. Select from users where email is equal to test. Something like that, right? So we put in we put in test and in goes test to this situation. Now I'm gonna copy this and paste this. Now what happens if we were to put a single quote at the end here? So if we put a single quote, that puts a single quote here. And now logically this doesn't make sense. This statement is not complete, right? The statement is, is incomplete and we could test that by putting a quote here and you can see the object object, we're getting that error. And if we come back and we actually, we can intercept this request in Burp Suite and send this over to a repeater and see the response, you can see we get the SQLite error. And this is one of the, the issues from last time, right? Was to generate an error. This is what we're doing. We're generating an error here. So we've generated this error because this logically doesn't make sense. And this SQL injection, lucky for us, is not blind. We're getting a, a response back. Um, so actually, look, I didn't. I wrote this out, and this is exactly what's happening. Um, I didn't realize that this is what's going on, but we got the statement pretty spot on. So the SQL query that it's doing is select from users where email is equal to, okay, test, and password is equal to this, and deleted, at is at is null. So we don't know what the rest of this is, but we're grabbing different columns here, right? And doing a, a statement here. So, okay, well, how can we take this and get malicious with it? Let's copy this one more time. I'm going to show you a very, very common way that this is done. So say we have test and We've got this test here and our statement's incomplete, right? We've got this, let's delete this for now. Let's say we're, we're back at test. What if we did something like this? We put the single quote, we say, or one equals one, finish that statement out and then end it with a comment. Okay, now let's take a look at what this looks like when we put it into here. Okay, we got test. This is now broken. 
and we say or one equals one like that. Okay, so now we are finishing out where we started. Um, and this is, uh, so we've got a complete statement here, right? And this is perfect. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, this condition, which is not true, or this condition, one equals one, which is true, that's a conditional statement, right? False or true is true. So because this is true, this is going to log us in as the first item in the database. The first item in the database for us just happens to be the administrator. So we can enter this in. We can do, we don't even have to put tests in there. You could literally just do that. Um, and you can put in whatever password you want. And attempt to log in. I might need to refresh here. Oh, I've got the proxy intercepted is the issue. Okay, and now you should be able to log in. You come over here, you see that we are admin at juice.sh.op. Okay. So we are the administrator account. You can see I was playing around in here earlier. So, okay, we're the administrator account. And now we have a few other things that we need to do as the administrator. One of those is to find the administration page. We can try typing in admin and seeing if that works. Let's refresh. Okay, we could try typing in administration and seeing if that works. Let me copy this. And you might have to actually new tab it and then go. See if that works. Okay, so you see in here that we access the administration page. The other way to really do this, now this is just me saying, hey, from experience, I know most admin areas are called admin and or administration and that's just experience right um typically is how this works uh so maybe it's not you could the other way would be to inspect the element and go into your debugger go to your main and go to your pretty main and start searching and we just say admin or administration and look for that, right? And then we look for the page that it's titled with. So that's another way to find that, is to search in the pages here in the, the main JavaScript. Exactly, so somebody asked about why it logged in as the admin, because it's pulling that first account. Let me pull over, let me put up the slides again. So the admin account, sorry, Say it was Frank here, right? It, whatever account was the first in that, that database, it's typically an admin. Not always, but you run into the issue where it's an admin and the first user ID here, or whatever the first account is, that's who gets logged in. Okay, so we're at the admin page. From the admin page, we have a mission that was tasked to us, which was to delete all five-star reviews. We can take care of that real quick. Screw the customers, screw their five-star feedback. We're a malicious person, right? So we got rid of all five-star reviews as well. And what else do we have to do here? Ah, last one. It wants us to log in as the as the admin user, so we know the email address, let's copy this email address. It wants us to log in as the admin user, but without using SQL injection. So let's log out. Let's ponder how we might do this. Okay, um, we could sit here and brute force manually, but why do something that can be done for us by a machine, right? So let's intercept this request. Let's go to log in. 
Um, might did it work? Oh, forward. Okay. So we've got this. Let's set, right click now and send this over to Intruder. Your Intruder tab should light up. And if we go into positions, it's all green. We don't want all that. So let's go ahead and just hit clear. Okay, so from here, we have set our email address, which we want to be constant, so we're gonna leave that alone. But the password, we wanna brute force on this password here. So let's highlight the password we typed in. I typed in admin, it could be whatever you want. Um, and let's just go ahead and hit add for this. So this is going to set a position here. This is position one. Now, as of right now, and what we've done this entire time is use the sniper attack. We're gonna continue using the sniper attack. It is a one off on one payload, right? So we're sniping, we're right on one. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna parse through a password list on the constant of an email, but a variable here of password. So if we go into payloads, now we can paste in a list that we find. We can go out to sec lists or anything like that. What's up, Black Sheep? Thanks for the raid, buddy. How's it going, man? So we can come into here and an intruder and we could paste the list. Now there are great lists out there. If we go to Google and we say one of the best lists out there is sec list. Now intruder is going to be very slow and I've got my proxy on because I'm dumb. So intruder is going to be slow on the free edition. And what we can do is we could say sec list and we'll just do GitHub. Sec list is a great resource. This first link here, right? Click on this and look at all the different lists that are coming through here. So discovery, fuzzing, passwords, look at passwords. All different kinds of passwords in here. Top 10, top 100, top 1000. You can just pull from one of these lists and kind of go from there. Um, I did check through a couple of these lists and while the password that we're going to find is going to be weak, it wasn't in some of the easy ones like top 10, top 100, or even top 1000. I don't think it was in top 10,000. And because Intruder is slow for us on, on Burp Free Edition, what we're going to do instead is we're going to do a proof of concept on how you could use it in Pro. And I'm just going to type out a few passwords here and then one of them is going to pop. We'll see why it pops or how it pops and how we can identify that. So we can say from this, we can just say admin. You can see all my old ones. We'll do admin, admin one, admin two, admin three. Oops, admin one, two, three, admin one, two, three, four. Well, let's try all these, right? And all we have to do, you can see we only have one payload to set. We're using a simple list, it's fine. Hit start attack, it's gonna say, hey, you suck for not having the pro edition, we're gonna slow you down. Okay, what stands out more than anything here? There's a few things that we can sort on when we're looking for, uh, when we're looking for successful brute force logins. One of them is status code. We can click status code Okay, admin123 has logged in at a 200. 200 means okay, right? On top of this, length is a big one. It's not always the status code. The status code might be a 302, a redirect. Uh, it could be something completely different, right? But the length might be different significantly. I have seen that happen before. I've seen a, an instance where I was attacking a client and I was getting a redirect back to the home page with valid credentials, but the length was different. Um, the, the length was different and it was giving me a session token. I wasn't getting a session token with anything else. So because it was setting a cookie in, in the response and the length was different than the rest of them, I could tell that I was actually getting a successful login even though it was taking me back to a home page login screen. So I knew from there I had valid credentials. So if you don't know your status codes, probably good to learn those, uh, the, the, the common ones, the 200, 300, 400 series, and just what those mean. Even 500s are important as well. Uh, but here we go. We got 200. 200 means okay, right? 
The length is, is longer than the rest, that's good as well. Another thing that we could do is say this admin login, right? And look, let's look at the response in the admin login. We could see that we had invalid email or password, which by the way, this is good. This is good security practice. Uh, so you don't want to disclose, you don't wanna say invalid password or invalid email. If you see that on a finding that's enumeration, we could tell if a user is invalid or not, or a password's invalid or not, and that's just bad, right? So here we're seeing invalid email or password. This is the correct way to word these things, but you would be surprised. Um, and the last assessment I had a week ago, I, I had invalid email only on there. So uh, username enumeration is still very real. So we've got admin one, two, three coming through, but we could also copy this invalid email or password. And we can come in, we can actually grep on that. We can do options down here. And I don't know if it lets us grep in free, it does. So we could paste in a grep exact match. We could just take that. We can remove all these right here if we wanted to. Just copy this and paste it in. And then the next time we run this, it should grep on those when it finds those in the response. See here? Okay, see the checkbox that did not come up? So you know when you sort by the checkbox that this response here is at least different. It doesn't mean it has to be valid for sure, but it's at least different than the rest of these where you know it's invalid. So this is a, a cool feature to use as well. I use it all the time. So we know the password is admin123. I've gone on a little rant about that, but hopefully that was okay. All right, let's delete this. Uh, do I have, I don't. What is the stupid, there it is. Okay, and we have logged in successfully. Xfinity allows anyone on a network to see all connected devices when you visit the router page. This could be enumeration, yeah. Yep, you can see all devices and uh, plus some IP addresses sometimes and um, a lot of routers are that way. A lot of home routers are that way. Uh, okay, so Let's see, we have gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these. All these are good. Okay, so we're through the SQL injection, we're through the admin stuff. Now there are three other ones I wanna talk about. If we come through down here, there's three that we have left. This weird crypto, I don't think we can do tonight. Um, so it's telling us to do something about informing the shop with a contact form, but when you look at it, it's not solvable without knowing about the crypto that's going behind the scenes. And a lot of those come in the later challenges. Um, we could do it, but it feel a little bit like cheating. So, uh, there are two that we could talk about now. This one here, actually, I'm going to leave these both to you, but I'm going to give you hints on both of these. Um, this one, this login MC say search. Now, there is a YouTube video out there. If we go here. I'm not going to play this because YouTube is very particular and I don't want to get it dinged for a copyright or anything. If you go to College Humor, rapper who is very concerned with his password security or with password security, listen to the rap song, okay? and then find his email address with the admin panel and log in with the user, okay? Figure out what his password is, he tells you in the song, and log in, that's one. Item number two, security policy. Behave like any white hat should. This is very vague. Uh, and this corresponds to this here. So if you go to securitytxt.org, this is a proposed standard they are trying to put out there to put a security.txt file on, on applications. So that way, if you were to find something malicious, you could report it to somebody without being concerned. 
Uh, if you, you know, like it, you still, okay, let's, let's put this back a little bit. You still can't go around hacking people or being malicious without permission. But if you were to stumble across something and you were concerned that reporting it might lead to jail time or something like that, uh, you could look for this file. I'm going to show you something else in a second. There's a very, very famous case out there where somebody changed a number. Let's just say, say it was equals one. They were able to change to two, to three, to four, right? Indirect object referencing and pull data for other people. Now, when they reported this, they uh, went to jail. So be very, very, very careful. Now there's a website out there for disclose.io. Disclose.io is a great website. Okay, so this is for Safe Harbor where you can actually do research and submit, uh, you know, submit things here. We You can search on different vendors and see if they exist in the, the uh, disclose.io and hopefully they're on that list. Hopefully we get more people on this list, but this is super, super important. Uh, you can't just go hacking around. So this is what this is about. So I will, um, I will leave this to you to follow the instructions on this website to find this flag here. And also got a YouTube user to block for asking for black hat stuff. Anyway, okay. So it is 8.55, we finished a little early, uh, but hopefully this was informative for you. Um, I, I, I think next week will be another good week, but I mean, we got to, we got to cover again cross-site scripting, got to see what stored really looks like, and we got to see SQL injection as well uh, and start talking about it. There's gonna be plenty more SQL injection and it's gonna get way more rigorous than what you saw tonight you saw the base example of the one equals one conditional statement. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and come to the screen and chat with all of you beautiful people. You're welcome, guys. I will open up Q&A for anybody that has questions except MTXR. Is this considered part of Zero to Hero? This is not Zero to Hero. This is his own course. Zero to Hero focused on network pen testing. This is web app pen testing. Completely different beast. Completely different. Any chance I could devote a session fully? I'm not sure what's in store. So like I said, it takes me eight to 12 hours to put together a lesson plan. Um, and I think that we're going to be breaking down the lesson plans even further. Like, I don't think that we're gonna get through 19, um, 19 solutions in one day, like when it comes to the medium or hard challenges, because they're gonna be so more difficult than what we're doing now, uh, unless we do a marathon stream. But there are, there are still, I there's gotta be at least seven or eight more cross-site scriptings to go over. And those combined should keep us pretty busy. Does web app pen testing require a different skill set? Can you be one without being the other? Yes, completely different skill sets, similar methodologies uh, in terms of the hacking methodology, but completely different tools and skill sets for the most part. There's some overlap, but the they're they're vastly different. Uh, you can absolutely be one without being the other. It's easier, in my opinion, to be a uh, web app pen tester without being a network. If you be a network pen tester, they're probably going to want you to do web app as well. If you tell me about your band, the Black Cats, if that results in a band, no, I will promote your band, the Black Cats. Uh, do you use Intruder a lot? Uh, yes, quite a bit. I use Intruder for most of my brute forcing. 
how could that change the numbers? Are we talking about we are talking about weave? Yes, we are. Uh, thoughts on relying on polyglots? Relying? I, I think it's they're okay to fuzz with. I, I don't know if you rely on them. Uh, they can they can cause some bypassing. I know somebody who really likes them, um, but I, I feel like it's a mixed bag. How many programming languages do I know? Probably zero, if we're being honest. Do you use a particular clipboard manager? Um, I don't. I just use whatever's built into Windows. Uh, we're asking Black Hat questions again. Boom, on the block. Jesus Christ. Oh, what's up with the sub coming through? What's up, Greensboro? Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. The Real Root Beer, subscribe. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Have I gone through all of Juice Shop? I have not gone through all of Juice Shop. I realize I'm missing questions. I'm going to bring this over here so that way I can see more of these. Do I think this course combined with Zero to Heroes enough for the PWK? I think Zero to Hero is enough for the PWK. You don't really need this. The PWK is enough for the PWK. Like it's it's meant to help you pass without much other needs or external resources other than Google. I realized that YouTube wasn't coming through on one of these channels, so sorry about that, guys. I don't know why it wasn't relaying. Relay's broken, apparently. Uh... Is it better to know the language and fuzz by hand? I think knowing the language and fuzzing helps. I will be honest with you that I, sir, am a chucker. I will chuck and see what sticks. There are much better people out there than me that will find the the complicated uh, the complicated way through by fuzzing, but I am typically not that smart. I'm not I'm not trying to be funny. I'm being serious. Like on, on terms of knowing programming languages, uh I know I know zero. Like comfortably to say zero. I can Google my way through uh, writing code or writing a script or anything that I need to do. I understand the logic behind a lot of program programming concepts. I can think logically how I want a program to be, but if you would ask me to like sit down and write from scratch a program without having any other resources, can't do it. Is it a good idea to specialize in some sort of specialized attack or particular attack? That's what all the bug bounty guys say. The bug bounty guys say that they like to focus in one area as to not, you know, you know, not get too concerned with other areas, uh, be a, a master in one location and just look for those types of bugs. Uh, you know, so I think that might be beneficial. And then maybe if you get good at one, start looking for other ones as well. Any tip or book for bypassing WAF? Uh, so bypassing WAF, there is a good, um, oh God, eLearn Security's WAF X is designed solely around WAF, WAF bypassing and uh, advanced injections. Thank you, The Lobe, I appreciate that.
the hardest thing for me in a in a pen test somebody's making a custom overlay i'm excited uh the hardest thing for me in a pen test i'd so my my networking concept of pivoting always blows my mind i don't know why it just always blows my mind it's something that i can do i can i can do it successfully i've done it successfully plenty of times but the concepts and the reasons as to why it's happening, very, very difficult for me to understand. Some people get it like that. Uh, but that's the one thing I struggle with from a theoretical aspect. I'm so stupid when it comes to it, I promise. I don't know anything about getting around the limits on community edition. I agree. I think this user is a bot and blocked. Uh oh, you're drafting in a couple hours. Don't draft Andrew Luck. Whatever you do. My draft is my drafts this weekend, actually. I prefer network to web apps. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, I'm way more comfortable in the network side of things. I've got better experience. It's more entertaining. It's just my thing. Uh, two, the web app side of the house is uh, much more, I don't know, uh, a lot more people there. That you, if you don't come from a dev background, you're going to struggle a little bit. And the... The devs, when you go to debrief devs on a web app pen test, they are more combative, right? And I've said this before, but they're more combative because you're tearing apart their baby, possibly their jobs on the line if they've just been shitty. Uh, you are sitting there and, you know, possibly destroying them for how bad or, you know, they've done. And they get really combative over the littlest things. Uh, but the you know like the network people for the most part they're just chill they're like you're like you need to patch that go do this and they're like okay that's that's great who is iverson alan iverson that is correct outcast you are not blocked sir yeah we're, we're talking about practice practice If you're new to pen testing, start with zero to hero. It's a very comfortable shirt, man. I love the Synac shirt. Is there any way to escalate privileges to admin from a SQL? Do you have a shell on your SQL server? Checked out the leaked in link. What? Why are you sending me links? Oh, a developer copying code from Stack Overflow. Nice. Oh, I did see this the other day. That's actually hilarious. Now I have seemed to have lost my wedding ring, which is not going to be good if I don't find it before uh, the wife comes home. So I don't know where that slipped off. Apparently, I've lost that much weight that it just falls off my finger. So that's not good. I hope the dog didn't eat it. Bye, J Delta. You have an interpreter shell, but not as admin. Uh, look into Windows priv -esque or Windows local exploit suggester. See if you can run through that. And uh, 
you're gonna have to start searching. Try to run like Sherlock on the on the machine. See if you can do any privest there. Can you do token impersonation if they have a domain? Yeah, you could paste links. That's fine. Abort podcast and start looking for the wedding ring. I'm searching around. It cannot be far because I feel like it just slipped off my finger mid midstream. So, honestly, when I stand up, I'll probably find it. But my uh, my ring's luckily not that expensive comparatively. I'm guessing it dropped. Ugh. Feels bad, man. If I don't, uh, <laughs> if I don't tweet tomorrow, guys, it was nice knowing all of you. Where's my iced coffee? No iced coffee today. I look like I smell fresh. Um, God, what is the name of the cologne? So I like, I like Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, and uh, the the one I've been wearing recently is a I think it's a Giorgio Armani. Three fifty for the Iverson chair, dude. This is this is an heirloom. I can't even I can't get rid of it. Your network provider doesn't care that you're trying SQL injection attacks. They can barely monitor what's going on. Can it be logged? Yes. Are they actually monitoring you? Probably not as closely as you think. Mostly remotes offered for experienced people. That is accurate, but I got a remote job as my first job in pen testing. I was not experienced at all. So it's possible, but you have to be incredibly patient with it. I really don't know where this wedding ring went, guys. Holy shit, how does it fall off of a finger? Like, what do you have to do for that to happen? Unless it fell off, I showered earlier, unless it fell off in the shower. That's possible, which it wouldn't have went down the drain because it's huge. So maybe I'll check the shower. What's up, Rumham? Do I think Taco Bell cheese fries should be a permanent fixture? I do think Taco Bell cheese fries should be a permanent fixture. Why not? Those things are so good. Does Eternal Blue still work? All the time. All the time, my friend. Bye, Salo. Celo. Yours fell off in Hawaii? Shit. What character did I start in WoW Classic? I've never played WoW and I will never play WoW. Wedding ring tattoos are definitely, uh, definitely an iffy one.
Always start with zero to hero. Always start with zero to hero. I just saw one that came through and I swear I read it. Did it, oh. What techniques did I use to get certificate? All certificates in three years? Lots of studying. That's it, lots of studying. Night root beer, thanks again for the sub, man. What's it feel to be followed by Georgia Wyman? It feels pretty good. She followed me out of the blue, man. I don't know where it came from, but it feels awesome. Now, if we can only make the Post Malone collab happen, that's the next that's the next uh, thing we need to do. Let's make this Post Malone collab happen, guys. Eternal Blue works on Windows 7, 8, 10, 2008 server, and 2012 server as well. Good night, PC wizard. Post exploit Malone, I like it. VM or live USB? I'm a VM person all the way. Do CTS help with bug bounty? Sure, any practice helps. Do you bypass XSS filters? Uh, there's a whole payloads list. Start looking into those, honestly. Like the one I showed you, you gotta, you gotta get creative. And sometimes they're just not bypassable, honestly. What's the quickest you got domain admin? Uh, probably an hour, I would guess, from cracking a password to taking it offline and cracking it and then just leveraging that to get to get domain admin. You're welcome. Why is our little counter not working? That's sad. I have not tried blue keep at all, honestly. I, Cause there's not really the exploit out. I mean, you could do the proof of concept, but the proof of concept is only gonna take you so far. Can automated tools be used in bug bounty? Sure. Will they find you bounties? Probably not. Maybe if you're lucky. Let's shoot for, what, 13 more minutes, guys? 13 more minutes. Try to push this to 9.30. Maybe do some Overwatch or something afterwards. Where's the monster? I already drank the monster this morning, my friend. I thought I wasn't taking any questions from you, MTXR. Why am I sitting here answering them? Yeah, dude, I gotta find the ring first, honestly. Favorite monster is the white one. The white monster is the best. Have I tried the green one? 
I have tried the green one. Thoughts on the EWPT? I love the EWPT. Great, great course, great certification. What am I drinking? I'm drinking a Diet Mountain Dew. Ooh, Banger Monster. That's a good one. Um, Bang if I really want to get hyped. Honestly, like I, I like Bangs more than, than Monsters, but Monsters are like the... I don't know, Monsters are like the OG for me. Like it's something I keep going back to. How often do you encounter Linux servers versus Windows servers? I would say you encounter one Linux server for every 99 <laughs> Windows servers. No love for the NOS, man. No love. I've actually been drinking uh, the Rain. Rains by Monster are, are uh, pretty good, too. They're absolutely a, a ripoff of Bangs, but they're a tiny bit cheaper where I live, so... Hey, thanks, Outcast. Pretty much learn AD? Yes, learn AD, 100%. Nightlinks, are you trolling me, bud? I don't think I've ever run into a server core. Uh, yeah, exactly, Ninja Jobs is probably the best place, followed by LinkedIn. Coffee monsters are good. They put you on the toilet though, for sure. How hard is Active Directory to learn? There's a um, there's a wide learning gap. I think you can get by with pen testing Active Directory at a junior to mid level with pretty general AD knowledge. And for the advanced side of things, you can get really advanced. Really advance really fast. It's unsafe to run malware inside of VM. I've never had an issue with it. Uh, if you really, really want to be cautious, you could run it in a VM offline on like a computer you don't care about that never touches the internet. How many certs do I have now? I don't know the number. Honestly, don't know the number. Should you teach yourself AD? Yeah, I would teach, just learn the basics of AD. Honestly, Microsoft might even have a free course out there on Active Directory, they used to. Uh, would I ever consider doing a video series? I will be recording a video series for a class in the next couple weeks. Um, whether or not I actually ever release that is a is another story. Um, kind of like I've said before, the advanced stuff really doesn't do well on YouTube. Most people don't make it that far. So it's like I'm speaking to five people. Um, I, I have considered it. it. It's just a lot of work for... Uh, not much return, if that makes sense. How much weight am I down? Um, like 13 pounds, I think. Do I play Dead by Daylight? I don't. That game looks fun as hell, though. I've always wanted to play that game. Yeah, I think I will do a pay release of the course I'm doing. I don't know what the target price or anything is yet. 
Uh, that will be released after the September 21st class. Fifteen bucks. I've still been in this Overwatch kick because now I can play healer and actually dominate. Why is pivoting harder than gaining initial access outside of getting kicked off? I don't know if pivoting's harder than gaining initial access. Pivoting, pivoting, like I said earlier, just blows my mind. Bye, Ada. Thanks for stopping by. We got five minutes, guys. Just so you're, uh, just so you're aware. Bye, MTX. Thanks, man. I saw something. Is cybersecurity worth it? Cybersecurity is worth it if you think it's worth it. If you don't truly love the field, they're gonna struggle. I don't know if a security engineer or software engineer knows how to secure their products better. Wow, dad jokes. Love it. Is pivoting taught in Zero to Hero? Yes. We don't go, we pivot with Metasploit. We don't go into proxy chains or shuttle or any of those other tools. What search should you look at before applying to entry positions? <sighs> Depends. What do you want to be when you grow up? Bye, Burnt Toast. the toughest question I've had in an interview I don't know man I've had some shit questions I honestly couldn't tell you the toughest question I've had I've had some bad ones I've had I had an interview once where I swear to you they were just trolling me like they asked me this is a pen test interview they asked me what state if I could remove one state from the United States what state would I remove they asked me um, that stupid hundred uh, duck sized horses or one horse sized duck question. This is all in the same interview. Um, always remove New Jersey. New Jersey was not my choice. Thanks, Ahmed. I appreciate it. Uh, what was your question that you said I didn't answer? I probably didn't see it, if I'm being honest with you. My answer was Alabama. <laughs> it was Alabama. Most pen testing interviews are about methodology. At least the good ones are. I've had other interviews where they were like, where they were like, yeah, what are the three types of cross-site scripting? What is this port, this port? Uh, but the best interviews and the ones that are, I think, the where you'd want to work are uh, a mixture of methodology questions with some sort of practical as well, like a uh, a hack the box style, you know, write a report type assessment. What's up, Czech Republic? Still waiting on this question that I didn't answer. Do I have to scroll up for this? When did you ask this question? I am like so far up here. The tool I use to screenshot is called Greenshot. Greenshot. There's also a Linux version of it called Flameshot, apparently. Bye, Rumham.
How many interviews have I gone through? A lot. Did I turn down job offers? Uh, I did. I did turn down a job offer because. So the job was. Uh, it wasn't going to meet the needs that I that I had. This this job was one putting me through the ringer for what appeared to be no reason, and two they made it very clear that they weren't going to offer much training. They weren't going to teach me anything. It was like a 55 hour a week job. And it really, um, it wasn't for me. I wanted somebody that was going to be a good manager to me. I didn't think the manager was going to be a good manager. Uh, it just didn't feel right. Like you have to, it has to feel right. Your manager has to feel right. The job has to feel right. Uh, for me, it didn't feel right. Does Pentest Plus help? I have no idea. I mean, I have the Pentest Plus, but I just took it on a whim. I took it in beta. I didn't study for it or anything. So I just took it because it was 50 bucks. What am I current learning myself? Uh, I am working on some more advanced AD topics. My life has been nothing but advanced AD, like really advanced AD stuff. Why does Hydra get false positive? I have no idea. Does sitting in the Iverson chair make me feel like more of a baller? Dude, I feel like such a baller in the Iverson chair. To know that we've sat in the same chair feels pretty good, man. Pretty good. All right, guys, 9.30. 9.30. I am dipping out. I got to go find this wedding ring before I get massacred. So I'm going to go do that. Thanks, everybody, for showing up tonight. Um check out the discord if you have not checked out the discord if you need the link you can do exclamation discord please come say hi uh, other than that we will be back next week same time same day eight o'clock eastern on wednesday night so thank you everybody i appreciate it bye